Uh, join us now, White House economic, economist Jared Bernstein. Uh, he's a member of the President's Council of Economic Advisors, and it's, it's so topsy-turvy, uh, Jared. Good news, bad news. I, I guess what I'm getting to is the President, you know, keeps talking about how strong the economy is. That's normally good, except when the Fed is trying to orchestrate a slowdown in demand. So, you know, every well, time the, the president says things are awesome, things are great, uh, man, we've got, you know, job numbers are, are staying in there solid. It just means that there's no pivot coming. So see how hard it is to walk that line, dear? Yeah, I hear you. But both of those things can be true and I'd argue are true. Uh, the president has talked about this uh, over the past few months, a transition from the breakneck growth pace of 2021 to more steady and stable growth. That's what has to happen to ease inflationary pressures. And by many metrics, that's precisely what's happening. I mean, our goal is to maintain the strength of the labor market uh, while doing all we can and respecting the Fed independence as they do all they can. Uh, to reduce price pressures. And when you have an unemployment rate that's close to a 50-year low, you're creating jobs at the kind of pace that we've seen, uh, you know, it, it, I think it's very hard to make any kind of an argument uh, that the economy is not good. I think the economy, and, and I should say family budgets, are very much uh, challenged by elevated prices. But even there, uh, we see progress, particularly in the area of energy, but also in the area of supply chains and goods prices. So I think there's a much more fulsome story to tell there. It's on that poll that uh, it, even the, the public is aware that the government spending can, can exacerbate uh, in, inflation, Jared. And, and I was going to, you know, I was going to help you out and, and, and mention that the UK inflation numbers are worse than here. They're like 10 percent around the world. We're seeing it. And, and there's true. a lot of reasons for it. That still doesn't mean that you should pile on the spending, though, with something like student loan or, so let me, or whatever. Let me speak you, to did, that. Did, did you try to talk the president out of that? Did you, would you do you still need to tell us that that was a good thing uh, to do that? Even let though me we're... speak to two things you just raised. I really okay. want to get into this poll you just showed because I think it's it's fascinating. So first okay. of all. Um, uh, it, it's now uh, known the Congressional Budget Office. We've been saying this, but the CBO just uh, announced this that the budget deficit is going to come down 1.4 trillion this year. Now, you and I can argue about the causes for that. It has to do with both lower spending, but also strong economic growth generating receipts into the Treasury. And so that actually creates negative fiscal impulse. That's complementing the Fed. Um, now, the thing about the poll is the th uh, the thing I caught was that. That's exactly the slide I wanted you to put up. Thank you. You and I are like, uh, we are keyed in this morning. Uh, cutting health care costs, cutting government spending, raising corporate taxes, what voters want. Big majorities on those first two, majority on the third. Every one of those policies is accomplished in the Inflation Reduction Act. It cuts medical costs. It cuts the cost of prescription drugs. It cuts the cost of health care premium. It reduces the cost of insulin. Uh, if you talk about raising taxes on the very wealthiest corporations and tax evaders, it does that too. You talk about less government spending, it more than pays for itself. Republicans have said on record they want to repeal the Inflation Reduction Act. So if that's what voters want, if what you showed is what voters want, what they don't want is the repeal of the legislation that does exactly that. 